I've talked quite a lot on this channel about the dangers of far-right extremism. I'd quite happily also admit there's a danger in far-left extremism. This article that I'm going to share is from The Guardian from today. Um, I'm sure there'll be some people who are watching me going, it's it's The Guardian, that special paper that only left-wingy people read. Oh, I love the adverse there for Retro Hi-Fi at the top as well. Um, UK man with Hitler picture in home used sticker campaign to stir racial hatred, court told. Sam Melia accused of running far right network handers for Pudsey in Leeds. I'm sure it wasn't Pudsey Bear either. Um, the alleged leader of a white nationalist organization displayed a picture of Adolf Hitler and Third Reich posters in his home, of course, head. As far as that goes, old. I find that quite tasteless. I, I wouldn't for a moment want Adolf and the boys staring down on me on the walls of my house. But if he really feels he must want them around his house, his business. Um, um, but Sam Milley is accused of running the far right network 100 Handers. And there is a reason behind that name we'll get back to in a bit. From his home in Pudsey Lead and faces two public order charges, stirring up racial hatred by publishing written material and intentionally encouraging or assisting the commission of an offence. Leeds Crown court here, the charges related to racist stickers, Melia, allegedly designed and produced between 2019 and 2021, which he had then posted in public places around his community and encouraged thousands of online followers to imitate. By the way, for those who follow groups on YouTube and whatever and start typing rubbish like I'm a lone wolf or encouraging other people to bounce around the streets or going it's not too late or we can do things or intimating that you know violent action is possible bear in mind this kind of article you're pushing on the edge of the law and possibly attracting a jail sentence to yourself they bore slogans such as reject white guilt nationalism is nurture we will be a minority in our homeland by 2066 by 2066 you'll probably be dead mate and um, diversity designed to fail, built to replace. Melia 33, he'll de like, okay, Melia 33, 2066. What are we in now? 2024. That's 42 years away. Melia would be 75 years old if he's still knocking around. He'd be an old man. Was described by the prosecutor Tom Story as media savvy in his running of 100 handers and also careful to ensure that actions taken in support of what are ultimately racially offensive perspectives are somehow dressed up in a veneer of legitimacy. However, police had found strickers on his computer featuring overtly racist messages including mass immigration is white genocide. Second generation, third, fourth, you have to go back. Does this remind you this sort of junk of, of any of the large number of fun right sort of groups you're finding on YouTube at the minute and elsewhere? Second generation, third, fourth, you have to go back. How many generations more? 20th generation, 30th? You know, how far back are we going to go with this? Back to the time of the ancient Romans? Oh, look, uh, somebody, his family came over from ancient Hispania. <laughs> He's not really English. There is a war on whites and they seek conquest, not asylum, the jury was told. Police had also found a book by Oswald Mosley on his bedside table and a poster of his living room in the courthead. I'm a bit less confident about that because I can see legitimate reasons somebody might have a book by Oswald Mosley. There might be a, a study, history student or a teacher or all sorts of other reasons. That one is one I judge contextually. That reminds me a bit worryingly of about the, of the 1970s when Irish people were being arrested for having books on Irish history or Irish rebel records in the house. I'd be a bit hesitant about that one. On Telegram, that marvellous thing, where 100 Handers had 3,500 followers, the court was told I had used racist slurs about black, Asian and Jewish people. Not, therefore, a huge group. 3,500 followers is not tiny and it's not huge. It would be quite easy for someone dedicated to attract a following like that quite easily if they put a bit of effort in. Also, it's quite easy to get people wound up if you use the right buzzwords. On one occasion, he had written about how he was going to plaster his hometown of Pudsey with stickers the night before a Black Lives Matter cat march. On the face of it, a bit silly and sounds like a, a bit of a, a bit of a silly thing, but um, 
for every one person that's going to plaster things with stickers, is that there'll be one or two people who'll be plastering things with punches. And if Mr. Melia starts attracting them, it's more serious. Another time, the prosecutor said, Ms. Melia wrote that before a march against racism in nearby Otley, he was going to go out heavy-handed with stickers. Well, yes, OK, that sounds a bit stupid, I must say. I mean, I get the impression of him running down to Ryman's and buying a, a, a pack of those stickers, just sticking photocopiers to do mass photocopying of stickers on and running down the streets going, man's got stickers, bro, and sticking them up everywhere. I don't really see it as deadly, but I can see that his ability to wind people up and cause offence could be eventually. Before later posting a photograph showing a sticker on a lamppost in front of the Otley and Eden Labour Party officers, which read mass immigration is white genocide. These were all ultimately driven by a mass motivation, motivation the core head. Here we come to the name The Hundred Handers. The Guardian covers this very briefly. I'll cover it a bit more in a minute. The Hundred Handers group, named after giant creatures from Greek mythology with hundred arms. There's a bit more to it, Guardian. Can't anyone just put a little bit more research in? Three lines more would have told us a bit more. Was described in court as anonymous, meaning that nobody needed to involved needed to know anybody else's identity. This was clearly a means by which the defendant sought to protect both himself and others from any potential investigation. It was active in the UK and a number of other parts of the world, the court heard. The stickers also contained a wealth of anti-BBC, anti-lockdown and anti-mask messages related to the COVID-19 pandemic, including live in fear, it makes you to control... I'm not sure that being anti-BBC is evil in and of itself. If it's something like um, um, anti-sort of like, I don't support the licence fee. If he chooses not to pay that, for example, it's his own choice and he can be fined for it. But it's I can't see it as some particularly wickedly evil thing in and of itself. If he starts threatening BBC presenters, that will be something else entirely. Um. <sighs> This organisation has an entry on Wikipedia, the Hundred Handers. Hundred Handers Group. Now, as ever, it's Wikipedia. So there's probably some room for debate about the accuracy of anything, but I'll read it out. The Hundred Handers are a British far-right anti-immigration group, the predominantly homosexual group. How, how does anyone know this? Is somebody sleeping with all of them or something? are known to put up posters and stickers promoting alt-right nationalism. There have been known to put razor blades behind their stickers. Their stickers have also appeared in Canada. The group was first reported in May 2018 in TTR World. Ah, TTR World. World. This is a um, Turkish broadcaster, which is... How shall I put this? Approach it with some caution. Um, in January 2020, fake Extinction Rebellion protesters were reported in Brighton. These included Stop White Genocide, How's the World, Destroy the Environment, and Population Control in the Third World. A member of Extinction Rebellion Brighton said the posters were against everything we stand for. In March 2020, further such stickers appeared in Bedford. In September 20 2020, Stickers with racist slogans and linked to the Hunter Handers appeared in the Crooks area of Sheffield. Stickers were also reported in Scotland. In June 2020, it was reported that the group had put out messages in Canada and never apologised for being white, and there is a war in white, and it's okay to be white. Um, I don't think I need to explain the debatable history of that last phrase where it's become a battleground cry for all's right. Figures. In 2021, Hampshire police increased patrols and examined CCT footage in response to the hundred Hampshire's posting anti-immigrant white power stickers in the town of Romsey, including some that read white pri um, privilege, where privileges cross through in its white excellence. Now, the hundred handers, which I said I'd come back to, are from Greek myth, and it's going to be time for Jarrick's wonderful mispronunciations in other languages times. Hecaton carriers. Anyone Greek watching, uh, uh, do write in and, and, and go, that was bloody awful. Feel free. Um, in Greek mythology, the hundred handers, also called the centimanes, 
were three monstrous giants of enormous size and strength, each with 50 hands, heads and 100 arms. They were individually named Cotus, the Furious, Biarius, or Aegean, the Seagoat, and Gyges, the Long-Limbed. In the standard tradition, they were the offspring of Uranus, uh, have a giggle there, and Gaia, and helped Zeus and the Olympians to overthrow the Titans in the Titanarchy. Um, basically, that's why they've picked it, because of the idea that basically, one, there's an anonymity of 100 hands, and also you're overthrowing a previous tyranny. So it's a deliberate pick for that reason. Uh, on one hand, I'm not particularly sad to see people who are running far-right little groups from their house and causing local problems get a bit of a warning. On the other hand, I am a bit concerned about the idea that if someone's just got a book of something, somebody the government doesn't like in their house, that that's causing an issue. Um, that's dubious. There is a line on that one. I, uh, you know, if there's one thing be, or between... And there's a difference between putting stuff like material like that up in your house and on the street. That's your business in your house. Certainly, if I go to your house and it's up there, I don't want to be going back there, but and I don't want to be hanging around with you. But I, suggest, I suspect, given this guy had 3,500 followers following him around on the internet, I can just guess what was being posted on his group. There will be all sorts of remarks that we we can just imagine in our head. Unfortunately, Telegram has a rather poor reputation for this nonsense and has become a breeding ground for this rubbish, as have platforms like Substack, where the, the worst of the worst tend to go and hide their stuff behind paywalls, where basically you have to pay to get access, and most people are not going to do that. So they can more or less say anything they want behind those paywalls. Sadly, that's the nature of reality. The internet, which has allows us to connect and spread ideas, also allows people to spread bilge. 